Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Samuel Morris, pastor of Fountain of Living Waters Church in Queens, New York. You're watching The Oasis, our television outreach program. Praise the Lord. Now, we all know what an oasis is. An oasis is a paradise in the middle of the desert. Amen. What are the two outstanding features of the oasis? The trees and the water. The trees to shade you from the blazing hot sun that was beating down and drying the life out of you and good, refreshing, life-giving water. Amen. Glory to God. When you got born again and came into Jesus, you, you came out of the desert and you came into the oasis. But you know, too many Christians uh, come in and get the shade from the tree. Yes, they're, they're going to heaven when they die. Amen. But they never partake of the life-giving waters. They don't get the vibrancy of the Christian life that's supposed to be lived today in the earth. Just like um, a, a traveler in the desert who's hungry, who's thirsty, looks for the oasis, and it's a sign of hope for him, or her, him or her as the case may be. Amen. We as Christians, our life is supposed to be so refreshing, and it's supposed to be so vibrant that the people who are still in sin, amen, and if that's you still in sin, we're going to give you the answer to that before the program is over, so stick with us. Amen. Your life as a Christian is supposed to be so vibrant and inviting to the people still in the desert of sin that they want to come in and make Jesus the Lord of their life. Amen. As we go into the word of God, as we study, we are going to learn how to walk in the fullness of everything God has for us. We're going to drink the water. You know, when I was in school, we had a little saying about good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good is better and your better best. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy that God wants us to have days of heaven right here on the earth. So when you get born again, uh, you come under the trees, you get in the oasis, you drink the water. Things are supposed to get good and they get I know this is bad English, but they get gooder and gooder and gooder and better and better and better. Then when we leave this life and go to the next life, amen, then we get the best. Amen. I was watching a program the other day, a nature program, and I was watching the gigantic whales down to the little tiny krill, the little shrimp, the crab, starfish, all the different colored fish. And it came to me with such an impact that the God who created all of this lives inside of me. How can any situation, how can any problem in life defeat me when I have the creator of everything living inside of me? Amen. Let's go to the word of God. Now, when the teaching is over, don't go away because I'm going to be right back. We're going to talk a little bit more. Amen. As the program is playing, you're going to see contact information. Amen. Uh, you can order these broadcasts um, in any format you like. Um, again, use the contact information. Get in contact with us. Amen. Let's go into the word of God. God bless bless you. You understand? So these kids are going through stuff that um, they're only telling us the tip of it if we get any of it. And because we didn't grow up in their er era, um, they are facing things. Every generation gets wiser and wickeder. Things are out there they are facing that we never had to face when we were growing up. So when they come home, um, they don't always necessarily expect us to understand what they're going through. But just to be there, if they want to come and say, boy, I had a tough day. I'm glad to be home. Well, son, well, daughter, um, we're glad you made it home through all the toughness. And God, thank God he helped you through the day. And God is going help you through tomorrow. Don't worry. You can make it. Whatever you're going through, I may not be able to identify with it, but there's nothing new to God. God will help you get through it. Amen. But so many kids come in, they come into the house and you, you know you're no good, dirty, and the kid go in the refrigerator. You're in the refrigerator again, and you know all this kind of stuff. Amen. Glory to God. Let me, let me hip you <clears throat> If you don't have any children yet and you laying around having sex and you don't have a job, kids like to eat. All right, and they like to eat a whole lot. Amen. And, you know, I have a teenager. Well, he's not a teenager anymore, actually. He's past his teens. He's in a young adulthood. Amen. And he likes to eat. Amen. And he goes in the refrigerator in the middle of the night. I hear that thing, that refrigerator. 
Amen. Whether he's getting a drink of water or going in the snack bin to get something to eat, people like to eat. Amen. Whether they have jobs or not. Amen. So while you laying up there, think about that because that kid you might be making wants to eat and they're going to eat and eat and eat until they go in the grave and you can't put them in there. Once they come out now, you have to, re you can stop them from being conceived now by just keeping your legs closed and keeping your zip um, zipped up. Amen. But once they come out and breathe air, you can't send them back where they came from and you go to jail. All right. So once they come out that hole, they're going to want to eat. Amen. And if you are not ready to provide for them, don't have them. How'd I get on that? All right. But anyway, back to the house now. The ones that are here, amen, it is up to us parents. It's our responsibility to make sure that they have a loving place to come home to, a place that encourages them and builds them up, not curses them, but blesses them, speaks good words over them. And then you'll see a good word change in their life. No matter how bad they are, if you tell them how bad they are, all you're doing is reinforcing it. All right, all you're doing is building up what is. But if you want to see a change, you who know better, you got to make a change. All right. So what are we going to look at now? Proverbs 15, one through four. Oh boy. Here's a good one. Still talking about the mouth. Now a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, right, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are are in every place beholding the evil and the good. That means his ears are there listening too. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein, wherein the tongue is a breach in the spirit. What is a breach? When you have a battle line and you have your men, they're all lined up. Amen. And somebody comes and breaches. That means they punch a hole through your line and they get in back of your lines and they're able to get back there where you got your food, where you got your gasoline, where you got your ammunition and they're able to destroy it. So it says here that a perverse, a perverted, a devious, a tongue that has turned aside, a, a tongue that has departed a tongue that has left from speaking the word of God is a breach in the spirit. It opens up your spirit. It opens up your spiritual defenses so that the devil is able to get in and wreak havoc in your life. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. The eyes and ears of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The evil and the good what? Words. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A tree of life. If man had eaten of the tree of life instead of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he, death would have been banished. There would have been left. Uh, there would have been no death. We are going to get to eat of the tree of life. It's in the new garden, in the new um, heavens and earth. The tree of life is there. And we're going to be, it says that it has 12 manners of fruit. I um, mean, it brings forth um, every a different fruit every month. The leaves thereof are good for the healing of the nations. The tree of life that God had to move out because Adam was in sin and he couldn't live in. We couldn't live forever in that state. So he moved it out, but it's coming back. But think about how different, you know, we can't even imagine how different things would be if instead of eating the tree of knowledge of good and evil, man had eaten the tree of life. All right. But he says here that a whole some tongue is a tree of life. Doesn't mean you're going to live forever, but it means in your sphere of influence in your life, you will have life instead of death. Amen. Glory to God. What words are you speaking? What words are you speaking? Proverbs 17 and 20. He that hath a forward heart findeth no good and he that hath a perverse tongue falling falleth into mischief. He that hath a forward heart. Now remember Jesus said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you have a forward, um, 
heart, that means you're going to have a forward and a perverse tongue. He that has a forward heart find this no good. A perverse heart, a heart that is um, disobedient, a heart that has left off from hearing and containing the word of God. You know, with cable now and satellite TV, you know, you have saints that would never think about committing adultery, but they'll sit all afternoon and watch soap operas and watch TV shows of people committing adultery. You're partaking of them in their unrighteousness. The words, the language, the conversations that come across now on the airwaves. Amen. You used to have a censor who would not allow things on TV. Amen. But now, hey, how about you being an adult? You know, and you don't even, you could be lazy and still be your own sensor because it's called a remote control. When I was growing up, I was my father's remote control. Get up and put it on channel two. And my grandfather, get it up and put it on gun smoke. Get up and put it on the news. Amen. Now you can sit there with your potato chips and when something comes on, my wife says I got Roman fingers because doing commercials, I don't like paying for commercials. So doing commercials, um, I got the thing set. I know what's on other channels at this time and I'm flipping through. But you know, it seems to me that all the shows are on commercials at the same time. I don't know if that's by accident or that's the way they plan it. Amen. But I guess it's the kind of thwart people like me, but I don't stop because I got over a thousand stations. And while commercial is on this one, I'm going to find something somewhere, someplace else. Amen. Even if it is the news um, that my wife doesn't like. Amen. But the glory to God, something comes on that's not becoming. Amen. And that should, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, there are some things that you could sit there and you be watching and the Holy Ghost say, uh, uh, nope, turn, get that off of there. All right. Glory to God. And you're supposed to be saved and you got this pro TV and the guy is speaking profanity and blowing stuff and saying all kinds of stuff. And people all around know you listening to this stuff and any wonder why they don't want to come to church with you or be a part with you. Amen. Glory to God. But what does it say here? He that has a forward heart finds no good. Remember we read in James back in the beginning, amen, to keep your heart with all diligence for out of the heart are the issues of life. We are to keep the heart with all diligence. We have to keep our heart with all diligence because out of it flows what's going to come out of our mouth and what comes out of our mouth is going to determine, amen, what we see in the natural around us. Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at Proverbs 18 and 8. We're right here. All right, here we are talking about the talebearers, the gossipers again. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of, a be of this belly. Let's, let's go back up. Let's go back up. Let's start at verse 6. A fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. What is stopping a, what is causing a fool to be a fool? The foolish words that he speaks. When he departs, his mouth start, departs from speaking the words of the living God. When his mouth becomes forward, when it becomes disobedient, when his words become distorted, when they become false, when they become crooked, when they become perverse, when they become perverted, devious, when they turn aside, when they depart, when they leave speaking anybody, the wisest of the wise, when they turn away from speaking God's word, they become a fool. So he says here, a fool's lips enters into contention, always having problems everywhere you go. You know, it tickles me and, and I'm sure you've heard it. If you run around and in, in the, in the apostolic West Indian people circle, you've heard this. A lot of folks in our circles, for those of you who aren't in it, let me bring you up to speed. A lot of folks in our circle from the Caribbean, from the West Indian, in the apostolic church do days work. They do home health work. They care for the elderly. They care for children. 
So what happens is if it's an elderly person and the person dies or goes to the hospital, they don't have any work until they get a new case or the person comes out of the hospital. So when they lose the case, they come to church and they're crying. They're out of work. They don't know how they're going to pay their rent. They don't know, da, da, Lord, I need work. Lord, I need a job. Lord, I need. Then when they get the work, the next Sunday after they got to work, they're complaining. Oh, the work is hard and I don't like the lady. I don't like the man. You are not there to like them. You are there to get them to like you enough to let you stay because you need the paycheck. You were just holding up testimony service, crying, talking about how you needed work, how you needed a job, et cetera, et cetera. Please pray that I get a job. So we pray God is merciful. He gets you a job. There's a saying beggars can't be choosers. Amen. You get, get a job. Amen. And then you don't like it. You don't like the hours. You don't like the neighborhood. You don't like what the person watches. You don't like the way they talk. You don't like the way they act. None of that is any of your business. You know what your business is? They don't put their hands on you. And when they pay you, if they pay you by check, the check doesn't bounce. And if they owe you $500, they pay you $500 and they don't cheat you. That's all you interested in. All right. They don't put their hands on you and they pay you and the checks don't bounce. That's all you as the worker care about. You are the saint. You are supposed to be able to live peaceably with everybody. You are supposed to be the one to remember I got rent to pay and I got, this is what God gave me. And this is what uh, I'm going to have to deal with this Lord. You know, these people, they cuss and I don't like to be around cussing. You know, Lord, they smoke. I don't like to be around smoking. Lord, would you please get me something better? I would prefer a job or a case where they didn't smoke or they didn't drink or didn't cuss or didn't act crazy. Lord, but until you get me that job, I'm staying on this one. All right. Now, if you're going to have the gall or excuse me, if you're going to have the balls to quit the job, then quit the job and don't come to the church and complain about your bills being due because the door was open and you decided to pick and choose that you weren't going to take it. So if you decide to have the gall and the balls to quit the job, then you come to church, praise the Lord and quit worrying us about your problems. Cause guess what? Everybody else got problems too. All right. But see a lot of us, we go on these jobs and listen, it's all right to let people know you're saved. It's all right to offer them your prayers. It's all right. But you know, we really, um, need discerning. That's one thing that's missing in the body of Christ, because you can pray for people without asking their permission. Just pray for them. Who's stopping you? Amen. That's why the big controversy about praying in school, nobody can stop you from praying in school. You go into school and you pray and there's more praying going on in school than people want to admit, especially when them teachers pop up them surprise quiz on you. You be in people's mind. You'll hear a lot of old lords and old other things, but you'll hear a couple of old lords pop up in there too. So there's a lot of praying going on in the schools more than they'd like you to think. Amen. But anyway, nobody's stopping you from praying for them. Amen. See, but what we want to do, we want to go into other people's houses. Let me word it like this as a whole home health aid. I've worked as home health aides, so I know exactly what I'm talking about as a home health aide. I cannot go into somebody else's house and tell them how they ought to be living. Now I could say, you know, um, you know, um, you know, can you work Sundays? You know, look for opening. Um, are you going to be here Sunday? No. Um, they're going to have somebody else coming in on Sundays because I'm a Christian. I go to church on Sundays. Oh, you're a Christian. So they know you say, yeah. Um, and Sunday is our worship day. So I won't be here on Sunday. All right. Now, if they follow up questions, cause now they know you're a Christian. They know you go to church on Sunday. Now you got to act like one. Amen. But there are door opens and you could tell them about Jesus and you, but you know, you want to go in there, um, Singing, you know, um, uh, my God, Daniel's God's a deliverer. Daniel's God's a deliverer. I know he delivered me. You know, listen, you're not there to sing. Amen. And unless they're Christians and y'all can sing together, if that's not how they walk in, you sing to yourself. Amen. But see, a lot of times we want to go in there, take over people's house because we save and we want to force our salvation down their throat. And then when they complain to the agency or they tell us not to come back anymore, then it's the devil acting up. No, it's you in your big mouth. 
not knowing you're acting like a fool with your saved, Holy Ghost filled, speaking in tongue self, you're acting like a fool. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said that he that hears my words and builds his house or his life on my words, hears the word, you got to stay in the word. He said, I liken him to a wise man. He didn't say you were a wise man. Listen, if I, if I live in my house and I know my next door neighbor is into radios and he's in the short, he got antennas all over his house. He's in the short wave radios and all that kind of stuff. And he comes outside and he got a load of lumber and he starts hammering up all his windows and he puts lumber over his door. He takes his car, usually he's the car in the front. He takes the car in the garage. He usually has lawn mowers and stuff all over the yard. He takes everything in his yard and ties it down. If I'm smart, I'll either ask him what he's doing, or if I know he listens to um, weather radio, I'm going to go outside and do the same thing. I didn't put up an antenna. I didn't spend all that money on the um, equipment. I didn't hear the report, but I'm going to get the same results that he got because I saw what he was doing and I followed him. All right. Jesus said, those who listen to my words and build their lives, their house on my rock of a word, I will show you who he is like. Didn't say he was a wise man. He is like a wise man who digs down deep and builds his house on the rock. So when, not if, the storm comes and the wind blows, they are not able to blow that house down because he stand, it stands on a rock. But he says, I'm going to show you who is like. Didn't say you were a fool. He said, you are like a foolish man. He says, you ignore my words. You It's like building your hands on the, your house on the sand. So when the winds and the rains come and they beat on it, the house will fall and great will be the fall of the house. See, you don't have to be a fool to get a fool's results. All you got to do is do what a fool does, and that's use your words the wrong way. See, a lot of us, I told you about my friend, amen, that she goes to job, can't understand why she can't keep jobs, because she's the new person on the job, and she's going to tell them, well, you ought to be doing this, and you ought to be doing that, and I told, and she'll call me up and say, yeah, and I told them, and I told them, and then the next time we talk, she says she got a new job, amen, and I don't bother to ask her what happened to the last one, because I know she got fired for running her mouth so doggone much, all right, but see, so many times, we get the fool's results, because we think, that because we're saved and because we are, are filled with the Holy Spirit, that we are exempt from the negative aspects of spiritual law. Amen. Glory to God. And the negative aspect of physical, of spiritual law, rather, is that if you say the wrong things, amen, consistently, that that is what your life is going to consist of. Because spiritually speaking, life and death Death are in the power of your mouth. And whichever one you speak, that is what your life is going to be filled up. Now, you argue all you want. All we got to do is look at your life. Amen. Argue all you want. But that's what Proverbs 18, 20, and 21 says. It says your life, in plain English, is a result of the words you've been speaking. Amen. Glory to God. But the people that you know, for the most part, that are successful in any area, whether it's in music, whether it's in sports, whether it's in school, whether it's work, whether it's a career. What did they always say? They say, I'm getting me a contract. I'm going to be a rapper. I'm going to get me a contract. Uh, I'm going to be a basketball player. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to Harvard. I'm going to be, I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. And I'm going to be this. And I'm going to be that. And that's what they taught. And that's what they taught. And they went to school for it. Amen. And they rapped and they practice basketball, or they practice football, or they practice whatever it is they were practicing, and eventually they got to where they said they were going to be. Now, you look at the person 
who said they were going to be a rapper, but they stayed on the basketball court all day. They might become a basketball player, but I doubt they got a contract. Or the person who said that they're going to be a basketball player, but all they did was rap. They might have gotten a rap contract, but they didn't get basketball contract. You understand what I mean? Amen. Nobody becomes a doctor just by sitting on their porch all day, drinking Coors Light and saying, you know, um, I wonder what I'm going to do with my life. And then when they're 35 years old, they wake up and they're a doctor. No, it doesn't work like that. Amen. It was, they started, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be a policeman. I'm going to be a fireman. You ask a little kid. You know, there's a fella, um, brother that went to um, um, church with, um, name is Paul Roach. Now, I didn't know him when he was a little boy, but I know him as an adult. And when he was a little boy, the only thing he would talk about, from what I understand, were trains. Now, the pastor of his church, the uh, Bishop knew, Newsom, was a train conductor. So him and Bishop Newsom, he, from the time I knew him, they're talking about trains, and they're talking about trains. And another brother, Bishop Newsom's son, Irwin, is also or a train conductor. So him and Erin are talking trains and they're talking, you know, um, the this system can't work on that system. You know, the IRT can't work on BMT because the track is narrow and they're talking about this. And he went, and so what, Paul grows up and Paul starts working for Amtrak. And he, you understand what I mean? So since he was a little boy, he starts talking about trains. And as an adult, what does he get to do? He goes and he works on trains. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. So it's what's coming out. What's coming out of your mouth is determined, has determined where you are. If you are nowhere, then that means all your life, all you've been doing was talking smack because that's what you got. You are nowhere. So you don't have to be a fool to get a fool's results. All you have to do is act like a fool and you get a fool's result. Praise the Lord. I hope you enjoyed the teaching today. Uh, if you like a copy of today's program, just use the um, contact information that's appeared on your screen. Get in contact with us. Amen. Uh, get in contact with us also. If you would like to join us, uh, be a part of a ministry, be a part of this great teaching. Amen. Give us a call and we'll give you the pertinent information about where, when, how, why, and all that good stuff. Amen. If you are not born again, let me invite you to come out of the desert of sin. Amen. Cause you're going to die out there. Amen. Glory to God. But Jesus came so that you can have life. If you're tired, if you're sick, sick and tired of living the way you've been living, and uh, getting beat up by the devil, it's easy. Uh, let me change that. It's not easy. Jesus did the hard part. Uh, he left the easy part for us. All you have to do is accept him. Something as simple as saying, Lord Jesus, take my life and do something with it. Something as simple as saying, Lord, I know um, that I'm a sinner and I need help. I can't save myself. I ask you to forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Come into my life and be my Lord. It's as easy as that, my friend. And listen, if that's the decision you've made today, you took the first step on a journey of a thousand miles. You need to be in a good church home. Wherever you are in the United States, you give us a call and we will be able to direct you to a good church in your area. Until next time, this is Pastor Samuel Morris and the Oasis. God bless you.